Hi, this is Linda and Aaron. Thanks to all you wonderful viewers for clicking on our video. We recently sailed on the Enchanted Princess, which is one of Princess Cruises' newest ships. Princess Cruises is known as a luxury cruise line, but are they really all that great? There were lots of things that we loved, but also some things that we hated. So we're going to share our top five pros and cons. These are our opinions and experiences, so yours may be different, but this will give you a good idea of what to expect and what to watch out for. So let's get right into the things that we loved about Princess Cruises and our cruise. The first thing we really liked was the Princess Medallion. The medallion is a small quarter size wearable disc the size of an Apple AirTag. You can actually purchase AirTag compatible accessories like necklaces and wristbands that fit your princess medallion. The basic model comes with a lanyard that you can wear on your trip. Like your cruise card, you want to have your medallion on you at all times. If you're familiar with the wristbands or magic bands at Disney, it's very similar. This is how they can get you food anywhere on the ship because they can use your band to know where you are. Also, in the app, you can see where people in your group are. So when I went off to the gym, I could see if Aaron was still at the pool or if he'd headed back to our room. Another benefit is that when you approach your door, it unlocks. Don't worry, you have to be pretty close, like reaching for the door handle close. I appreciate that in the morning when I came back with some coffees and treats, because I didn't have a spare hand when I approached the door, it unlocked and I could use my butt to open it. Yep, that's where I was at in the mornings. The wearable medallion was definitely a fun improvement over the cruise cards. The second thing that we loved was how Princess has stepped up on their specialty dining options. Back in the day, there used to be the steakhouse and maybe one other. On the Enchanted Princess, you have the Crown Girl, Sabatini's, Bistro Sur Le Mur, and the Salty Dog Pub. The other great thing is that if you're looking to have a special night out on your trip, the cost is not nearly as expensive as other cruise lines. The specialty restaurants are only $29 US versus $50 we were seeing on many other cruise lines. Even better, Salty Dog was only $18. We had such a great meal there and enjoyed something a little bit different. If you want to know more about any of the specialty restaurants like Crown Grill or Salty Dog, we've got tons of videos you can check out. The next thing that we loved was the balconies. I understand balconies do come at a price and they're not in our budget or everybody's budget. But that being said, I do prefer the traditional balcony over Celebrity's Infinite Veranda. It's so nice to be able to sit outside at the end of the night, listening to the waves and watching the stars. When traveling in a hot climate on Celebrity, we found that our rooms did get really humid with that infinite veranda and a lot of moisture built up the, in the room. So this is just a personal preference, but when it works in our budget, we do enjoy having a balcony. The fourth thing that we loved about Princess is the luxury and traditional cruising at an affordable price. Princess is competing with Celebrity Cruises and Holland America. They do a great job adding some luxury and nice finishing touches like in the Piazza, which is gorgeous without costing as much as the other cruise lines. As you walk around the ship, there are so many beautiful details. They offer a great traditional cruise feeling without the gimmicks. There are still lots to do like enjoying live music, fabulous stage productions, and the entertainment staff running some fun activities like minute to minute games and lawn bowling. The crew on board were absolutely amazing from getting to know us at the International Cafe to the activities the crew bring in and all the positive energy. Oh yeah, we definitely tried the lawn bowling. The fifth thing that we loved, but also didn't love, which we'll get to later, is the app. So let's talk about what we loved about the app. The feature that I used the most was the customer service chat feature. When I had questions about excursions, ports, bag tags, or whatever might have caused me to wait in a line at customer service, you can just ask it in a chat. The response time was really fast and I enjoyed being able to ask from wherever I was. So definitely be on the watch for that feature. There's no reason to be spending time guessing and wondering. Just send them a message and ask. It's definitely a pro not having to line up and you can check out that line on the first day. It's usually pretty big. So those were the things that we loved. The new technology with the medallion and exploring the beautiful enchanted princess made our trip extra special. So now let's move on to what we hated about our most recent experience with Princess Cruises. So let's get started with that app. 
The app is so challenging, Princess actually had to run an hour-long seminar on the first day of the cruise, explaining all the features and how to access them. Let me tell you, that seminar was full. The daily view was not easy to navigate, and you had to scroll so far down to see what was happening. It was easy to miss activities. I think it was trying to be all fancy, but a list view would have just been so much easier. It's not a very customer-centric user experience at all, and for a company targeted at an older and more sophisticated audience, the app definitely misses the mark. For those of you that know, Aaron works in mobile experiences and he agrees with me on this. It really wasn't a great user interface and there's some improvements they can make to that. The next thing that was a big con was the main dining room wait times. We were really surprised that even with reservations, we were still waiting so long. We were always waiting at least 30 minutes or longer. The first night and formal nights were the longest waits. We've seen other cruise lines do a much better job organizing their reservations so you aren't waiting so long. On the first night we were waiting so long, we abandoned and went and paid for Salty Dog. I was really hungry and Aaron did not want me reaching hangry level. Surprisingly, Carnival Cruise Line did a great job using their app to make reservations at the main dining room. It was actually more of a call ahead. You could check in on the app from anywhere in the ship, then you'd get notified when your table was ready. You could be in your room, having a drink at the bar, or playing at the casino. It was super smooth and we never had to wait a long time, so I was extremely surprised and disappointed at Princess when we were constantly waiting 30 minutes or longer for dinner. The other thing that we thought was overhyped was the food and drink anywhere. This was pumped up a lot and it was supposed to be almost like Uber Eats at sea, but it was so incredibly slow. It would take 45 minutes to an hour. For example, one day we were getting ready for the sail away and we thought we might have a couple lattes on the balcony and enjoy the views while we sailed out. So 30 minutes before we ordered the drinks and some snacks and you can follow the progress of your order in the app. Well, we'd sailed away and we still hadn't got the drinks. Then we weren't sure, so we ended up waiting in our room for another 20 minutes. I just, I know I don't expect it to be instant, but I don't expect to be waiting 45 minutes to an hour. I could have zipped down to the International Cafe, got us a couple of coffees, and been back for the sail away. So again, not a super thing, but I think they just need to tighten it up to make it a bit faster. The fourth thing that we didn't like was how often Princess Prizes was closed. If you want us to do a full video about Princess Prizes, let us know in the comments below. But essentially, it's a chance to win money, onboard credit, or even a free cruise just by opening your stateroom door. It is cool that when you open your door, it pops up on the screen if you've won or if you've got a ballot entered, but it only runs when the casinos open and our cruise was port heavy, so that meant most of the time it wasn't open. It came in our premiere package, but I wouldn't just pay for princess prizes. As Aaron's reminding me, on a positive note, we did win $150. I just wouldn't be paying for it separately. Okay, now on to the last thing that we didn't like, and that was the dress code. We've made mistakes in the past, and now we know to always check the dress code before sailing. Princess has a more formal dress code, especially in the evenings. So this is a cruise men are going to want to bring some extra long pants on as shorts are not allowed in the main dining rooms. We did come prepared and it wasn't a big deal for Aaron, but we do know a lot of people that want to be comfortable when on vacation and don't want to have to dress up every night. So there you have it, the top five things that we loved and hated about Princess Cruises. Overall, we did have a great cruise and really enjoyed the Enchanted Princess. What do you think of Princess Cruises? Do you have a favorite cruise line? Let us know in the comments below. We love to hear from you and all of your ideas. Also, if you want some more of our content, we have another channel, Flamingos in Wonderland, where we talk about all things Disney and theme parks. Remember, memories are forever, so make them fabulous. Thanks again for watching and happy travels. I appreciate it in the morning when I was coming back with some coffees and treats because treats. <laughs> I did say treats.